Hello! Welcome to my tutorial on how to make paper leaves. In this step-by-step -step guide, I will show you all the materials I use in order to make paper leaves and I will also provide each step with explanations to make things easy to understand. So let's get to it! The materials I use are the following. Handmade paper, acrylic ink, a small container in which you will combine the inks and some water which you will mix with the inks, paint brushes, a paper towel, scissors, a ruler, a pencil and a paper cutter, glue, parchment paper, crepe paper and wire. I've also listed all of these materials in the description box below the video. Now let's get to work. First, I'm gonna speak a little bit about the handmade paper and acrylic inks that I use. Along the years, I have tried a few brands of handmade paper and so far the brand I'm using now, Lokta, has been my favorite. I wouldn't say I'm 100% in love with it, but it's the best I have found so far and at an affordable price for me. You can definitely try other brands of handmade paper until you find one that is most suitable for you or you can make handmade paper yourself, as I've seen other people do. The Lokta handmade paper has a rough surface on one side and a smooth surface on the other. I always paint on the smooth side. What I like about it is that it is a thin paper so it's easier to shape it once I cut it into leaves. You will be able to see that later in the video. If you choose a paper that is too thick, it will be harder to bend it when you want to shape it, so definitely keep that in mind when you decide to buy handmade paper. Now let me say a few words about the inks. The acrylic inks that I use are from the brand called Liquitex. I use ink because once it dries up it becomes permanent and it does not rub off if you accidentally touch the paper with wet hands. You can also try other brands until you find a brand that you are comfortable with. The Liquitex colors I have on hand and I will use in this tutorial are Prussian Blue, Naphtal Crimson, Yellow Orange Azo, Sap Green Permanent, Carbon Black, and Yellow Oxide. Now let's get to work. First we're gonna make the stems of the leaves. For this I will use wire, crepe paper, and some glue. You start by adding a bit of glue at the end of your crepe paper, like you see me doing here. And then you begin to wrap the paper around the wire. Like so. Making sure to add a bit of glue here and there as you go, so that the paper sticks to the wire. I'm not gonna wrap the crepe paper all the way to the end of the wire, but I'll show you the reason why later on in the video. So here it is, our first stem is done. Then continue to make more stems for as many leaves as you plan to assemble. Now let's begin painting our handmade paper. You place your handmade paper on a piece of parchment paper. 
because of the fact that we will be using water and ink and the handmade paper will become moist from this mixture we don't want our desk to get messy, wet and stained from the water and ink so that's why we put the parchment paper underneath make sure that your paper is with the smooth side up so now I'm gonna show you a few color combinations I use in order to paint my paper first I'm gonna make an olive hue so you add a bit of water okay and then add a few drops of green about four or five and two three drops of red this will give us an olive hue then mix the inks with the water and start painting the paper if you want your color to be lighter just add more water if you want it to be more pigmented add more ink and less water you can see that the paper absorbs all the water and ink one of the differences between the handmade paper and normal paper is that the handmade paper absorbs the water and ink whereas the normal paper mostly keeps it on top like a coating here i've mixed green with red but i've added more red drops than green to make the color of reddish rusty autumn leaves Don't worry if the color seems dark here while you're painting it. After the paper dries, the colors will look lighter. Now I want to make a lighter green, so I'm going to add some water. Then I'm going to put two drops of green and I'll also add yellow azo. But I'm going to put about five drops of yellow so that the color will be lighter after mixing start painting you can see that the color is yellowish greenish if I don't like it I just add some more green to the mixture maybe one or two drops it's always like trial and error until you get the colors that are most suitable for you. I want mine to be darker here, it's too yellowish, so let's see. Okay, I can see it has changed a little bit, it's slightly darker, so it's good. Here I'm making a dark hunter's green, so I'm mixing green and blue in about an equal amount of drops maybe just one extra drop of green plus one drop of black if you want to have some darker tones on your paper just mix the inks together with very little water like you see in my container or without any water at all and start painting the paper here and there with this darker mixture Now for my last color, I've mixed green, red and my yellow oxide, which has given me a brownish color. Like I've said before, it's all about trial and error until you find those color mixtures that you like. When you obtain a mixture that you're pleased with, be sure to write it down on a piece of paper or in your notebook to ensure that you don't forget it. 
That's what I normally do. It's good that leaves make allowance for our errors because they come in such a variety of colors. You can see that here I've painted some spots of this light brown over my other colors. So when you have finished painting the entire paper, it's good to set it aside for a few hours until it completely dries up. You can see that right now the paper looks darker in color because it has absorbed all the ink and water, but like I've said before, once it dries up completely, it will be lighter in color. So this is how the paper looks once it has dried up completely. It's no longer dark in color once the water and ink have dried. You can see that at the edges it curls up a bit, but that isn't a problem because you can remove those edges once you start cutting the leaves. This type of Lokta paper also has a bit of hairy texture when you look closely, but it's okay because even in some natural leaves you can find a hairy surface. You can see that the back side of the paper is not as pigmented with ink as the front side, but that won't be a problem because this side represents the interior of the leaves and will be glued. You'll see this in the next steps where I cut and glue the leaves. Here are a couple of examples of other papers that I painted. Here I mixed my permanent green with yellow azo, and I've also added a few splashes of just yellow here and there. And on this one I mixed permanent green with just a little red to get an olive green. For these lighter spaces I've just wet my paintbrush with clean water and added it to the paper, creating these negative pale yellow spaces. So let's start cutting the paper to make the leaves. I like to cut my paper into long strips, different in width, depending on how big or small I want my leaves to be. Here I've only cut out three widths as example. Now I start folding and cutting the paper to make the leaves. My first leaf will be this wide and this long. Then I continue to cut out as many leaves as I need. You can see that I've folded and cut different lengths and widths because I want to have different sizes of leaves. Now I'm gonna start gluing the stems to the paper. The reason why I said that you shouldn't wrap the crepe paper all the way to the end of the wire is because this unwrapped part will be glued inside the leaf to create the effect of a vein. I don't want my veins to be very prominent, so that's why I don't wrap this part with grey paper, because that would give them a larger look than necessary. To glue the stem to the paper, add some glue, like so, and with the help of a paintbrush, spread it all the way to the edges. You can see that I'm adding the glue to that side of the paper that is less pigmented and will remain hidden. Then I glue the stem inside the leaf, like so. Gently press on top of the leaf so that the two sides of paper will stick to each other, keeping the stem firmly in the middle. Repeat the process for as many leaves as you need.
After gluing as many leaves as you need, set them aside for half an hour or more until the glue dries up inside. Then you can start cutting them out. Here I have some leaves that I've glued beforehand so that I can show you a few simple examples of how I cut them out into leaf shapes. The glue has already dried inside, so I can start the process of cutting. I just start from the top and work my way downwards until I meet the stem. Be careful not to cut the stem too. That has happened to me on a few occasions and I can assure you it's not really fun. To cut the other part of the leaf, you can either start from the bottom and work your way to the top or flip your leaf the other side like I did here and repeat what you did before, cutting from top to bottom. Here I'm just cutting out freehand a leaf resembling those of daisies. I'm gonna cut this leaf to resemble the leaves of the forget-me-not flowers. I also made a template as an example. I will use it on this leaf and I'm gonna trace it out with a pencil to show you how I cut it out. I follow the marks of the pencil and start cutting. The reason I rarely use this method is because sometimes after cutting my leaves I still see some tiny pencil marks and it's harder to erase them from this type of handmade paper, so I prefer cutting freehand.
After cutting the leaves, you can shape them like so. Be careful not to bend on one side and then change your mind and bend on the other side, as this will affect the look of the paper, creating unwanted creases. If you want your leaves to be shiny, just add a layer of varnish on top of your leaves with the help of a paintbrush or maybe two layers, depending on how shiny you want your leaves to be, and then they will look like this. I just want to say one last word before I end this tutorial. The important thing is to practice and not give up. If your leaves don't turn out as expected, keep trying and you will eventually succeed. I too have had my share of trial and error, but the more I practiced, the better things have turned out. Thank you for watching this video and happy crafting!